Archie Moore to this day holds the record for the most knockouts in boxing history, with an astonishing 132 KOs. He held the light heavyweight title for 10 years, losing it at the age of 46. Although Moore possessed natural speed and strength, his success, especially in his later years, is largely due to the fact that he was one of the most versatile and brilliant boxers to ever string up gloves. Moore was not only comfortable, but an expert at fighting in any stance, in any range, in any position. He could crouch low and crowd his opponent, or he could circle smoothly and sting him with jabs from the outside. He could clinch and brutalize from the inside, or he could outposition his competitor with superior angles. And always, he was ready to stand and trade punches. Perhaps the best way to begin to understand how Moore put all of these techniques together is to isolate two aspects of his style, his punches and his cross-arm guard, and look at how they intertwined and flowed together seamlessly. Moore fought out of a cross guard, a style of fighting that allows for more protection. Most people can find the position makes their movement clumsy and awkward, but Archie Moore was not most people. When he squared up, his rear hand passed his centerline and rested on his opposite shoulder, while his lead hand crossed over his stomach to rest near his hip. At long range, Moore stood sideways and used his rear hand to catch and parry his opponent's jab. But as soon as his competitor moved into mid or close range, his parry would turn into a forearm block, crossing over to his opposite shoulder as Moore squared up into an extremely defensive position. At close range, he was able to parry his opponent's lead hook off of his elbow. His rear hand, resting on his opponent's shoulder, provided protection for the left side of his head, and his lead arm guarded against uppercuts and body hooks. While this is undoubtedly a strange feeling position to fight from, it did something invaluable for Moore. It allowed him to practice offense and defense all in the same movement. Moore didn't need to wait to retract his punches back to his guard to block or parry. His punches turned into blocks or parries as they passed through his target. In a fight, when every split second counts, the ability to block or parry punches off of your strikes cannot be understated. Additionally, Moore would often frame off of these same blocks to set up yet another attack repeating the cycle all over again. Moore's stable guard let him crash into his opponents off of his attacks, pressing close, smothering, and pushing his competitors, using the inside angle of his hands to clinch and disrupt their guard. In these ways, Moore immediately neutralized any potential counters, while remaining in close range to deliver follow-up shots. And Moore was excellent at close range fighting. It's generally optimal for fighters to position their head on their opponent's lead shoulder while clinching to avoid the rear hand but Moore's guard and mastery of angles meant he was comfortable working from either side. This allowed him more potential lines of attack. Here we see Archie cross his hand over to control his competitor's opposite hand and create an opening. It would make sense to think that a fighter would have a disadvantage in speed and position when throwing punches from a crossed guard, but Moore's technical footwork often left him perfectly lined up with his target. It is true that when Moore stood squared up with crossed arms, he would have to open up and throw wide to connect, but all it took was a quick step to the side to align Moore's hand with his opponent's head or ribs. This was effectively the same feel for Moore as punching from his narrow, long-range stance. After all, the only difference between a narrow stance and an open stance for a fighter is his position relative to his opponent, and the fact that Moore was comfortable in any situation meant that he could easily step out sideways or pivot to catch his competitors as they tried to exit an exchange. Or counter them if they tried to step around him. In the same way that it was near impossible to effectively outflank Moore's open stance, opponents had an equally difficult time trying to penetrate Moore's narrow stance to attack him head on. Most fighters, when their competitor steps inside with a jab, will try to pivot to maintain their sideways position, many times firing off their own jab as they do so. While Moore was competent and capable of doing this, he was also entirely comfortable staying where he was and leaving himself open, or even jabbing off of lateral movement. This meant he could counter from his current position before his opponent had completed stepping into their position, taking them completely by surprise. Many times, Moore would even step out wider, slipping or blocking before connecting with the counter. He was especially fond of doing this when an opponent stepped in with a deep cross, showing him one of his own. What it comes down to is that Moore did not need to try to adjust and maintain a favorite guard position, and this held true whether his opponent tried to sidestep his forward stance or circle his narrow stance. 
Moore knew the position his opponent was trying to get him into inside and out, and was better fighting in it than they were. Moore applied this concept to his upper body position as well, tricking his opponents into thinking he was far more vulnerable than he actually was. His forward shoulder position presented a tempting target, and when his opponent attacked, Moore would either pivot in with a tight lead hook, beating him to the punch, or he would quickly turn away to let his opponent's hand sail far past, much like a matador pulling away the cape from a bull. He would then snap out a short, tight cross. It's the same concept as a shoulder roll or a pull, but it allowed Moore to stay more balanced and much closer to his opponent when he countered. This is in fact the exact punch that knocked down Rocky Marciano in their epic battle. The last thing to understand before exploring how Moore put everything together is his head movement and feints. Moore entered and exited exchanges with beautiful head movement, able to use the full range of lateral movement in his sideways stance and lean far back in his narrow stance. His balance was phenomenal and he was one of the few fighters besides Muhammad Ali who could weave while cross-stepping. His cross-arm guard did allow an extra layer of protection, but it was mainly used to absorb and deflect blows when his head movement failed him. That wasn't to say that his guard didn't save him on occasion, helping him to weather a barrage of punches when hurt before adjusting and coming back to win the fight. Moore's constant head movement, hand milling, and elbow flares left his opponents uncertain when an attack was coming. Here we see how, after being driven to the ropes, he reclaims the center of the ring off of feints alone. So devastating were the punches of Archie Moore that simply flicking his hand would make his opponents back up from his superior position. Now that we understand how Moore's style seamlessly blended together, let's look at one of his best exchanges. Archie's opponent rushes in, but Moore sidesteps him and slips his jab, then clinches, pivots, and raises his guard. His opponent now attempts to land a cross, but more elbow blocks, cross frames with his rear hand, and then steps back into a narrow stance with an open guard. His opponent once more tries to land a 1-2, but this time Moore snaps his shoulders sideways, letting the punches sail past. He then fires out a tight cross as his opponent falls into his punch, stunning him. Moore now steps to the side and turns with his opponent, then finishes him off against the ropes. Archie had been knocked down four times earlier in the fight, but had weathered the storm and adjusted, coming back from the brink of defeat to claim victory. Archie Moore was a creative tactician who constantly outfoxed his opponents. He was that rare combination of fighter, fearless and crafty. He had raw strength and speed, but it was his ring IQ that allowed him to dominate at the top for so many years. Moore's record still holds to this day, and is unlikely to be beat with the rate that modern day boxers fight. But even if they did, it's hard to imagine another fighter like Archie Moore, the old mongoose. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and you could purchase my book Power of the Pros and his companion videos at the link below. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.